Are you Gulani Ben? This is Charlotte Laney. Let's say something with a kappa. Right, so today's video is going to be part song and part technique, and we're going to be looking at something like that on Emily. Can you talk about Emily? Do you like her? I love Emily. This is this is Emily. So, capos. Now, capos are a folk music kind of thing where basically you're changing this bit here. This is the bridge, and where you get your those kind of notes. But when you put a capo on, it changes what's going on. So your G C E A, if you put it here, changes to A D F sharp and B. I'll show you what I mean because it changes everything. Now I'll show you what the difference is between a, uh, a C minor from a open string, a bar chord and a capo chord. So C minor looks like this. You put your ring finger and you put it on the third fret like so. So open G string and all the others. And you can do a bar chord where you're putting your finger across the rest like that and then put your ring finger there and on the fifth fret and it sounds like this. That is also C minor. Now show me C minor on your capo thingy. Like this? Just like that. So it looks like A minor. Yes. So A minor sounds like this, but when you play it on that. And my capo is on the third fret. Three. Three. Capo three. A very important point, and Sharna Lady knows about this, is don't use a capo as a way of avoiding learning new chords or learning those bar chords where your finger goes across like that. I, a student I had refused lessons in the end because she didn't want to do a C minor like so that I've just showed you. So she was trying to put a capo all over the place and trying to work out how to do it in an easier way. And of course, the further down the fretboard, It gets harder to play the further down the fretboard you play. As you can. So let me show you the differences between a capo version of the chords and the the non-capo version of the chords. Well, I'll show. I'll do C minor here. So as I've shown you, so your ring finger goes across the C, the E, and the A string. It sounds like this, and you are playing an A minor chord. So it's your Middle finger. Oh, so it's... Middle finger behind the second fret of the G string. It's still G. Get in there. It's still G. But it doesn't sound like that. It sounds like that. Now your next chord is a G minor. Now G minor here is pointy finger behind the first fret of the A string. Middle finger behind the second fret of the C string, and on the E string, you put your ring finger uh, on the third fret, and it sounds like this. Whereas on that one, you and you playing what looks like an E minor and give it a strum. Oh. Now, the next chord is a B flat, and this is the one where people tend to leave the room when they're beginners. Not so, looking at anyone in particular with the B flat. I have played B flat before, thank you very much. She's actually very good at doing the B flat, just yeah. putting it out there. So, uh, a more straightforward version is putting your pointy finger across the E string and the A string behind the first fret. You put your middle finger behind the second fret of the G string, no, C string, please correct me and ring finger behind the third fret of the G string and it sounds like this. That's B flat, whereas on here... Then what looks like a G. So second fret with your pointy finger on the C string, middle finger on the second fret of the A string, and then the ring finger behind the third fret of the E string like so. But on here it sounds like this, and there it sounds like that. And finally, the F. Now, F is middle finger behind the second fret of the G string at the top there. And second fret bottom, the pointy finger is on the E string, and it sounds like this. Whereas on here, 
numbers on yours. I'm playing what looks like a D. Now I play mine in a funny way because I've got quite bendy fingers, so I use a bendy finger to do the top three strings, the G, C and E on the second. So on mine it's that, on yours it's, and when I play B flat it's this, and you do it. Perfect. Hang on. B flat. Maybe I'll play F. an F. You can hit me in the arm if you want. It's F or I think we should sing something or say something or play something. Well, Benjamin, did you not want to say about the style of song this is? Because it's got the repetitive four chords. The run. So what he tells me it's a turnaround thing, turnaround song. So you just have to know the four chords. And then you just keep repeating them around and around and around. So that makes it a really easy song to learn, even though it looks like it's quite hard because we're talking about a capo or we're talking about quite tricky chords. But it's quite, um, it's a good rhythm. Mm -hmm. It's got mm -hmm. a good rhythm to it. And it works with songs, certainly with uh, the hip hop style as well as uh, punk rock as well. Just something that goes around and around and around. You know what's going on and uh, you put melodies galore on it. So when we play them together, so we'll do the C minor. So you play. And again. And then the G minor. And then the B flat. And then the F. Now there's one final thing, Benjamin. Yes. The strum. Show me the strum. a chop where you extend your strum to stop all the strings. Not a but a whether it be with your the, the muscly part of your hands, the side of your hand if you're more like a guitar player. Whereas here so you got that stop. So you're going down and stop. incorporating my inner Justin. Howdy. Where's Charlotte gone? <laughs> now we can begin.
the music with or without the capo, the sheets of it will be on my website, which is www.ukulelewithben.com. The link is in the description.